This is a bit of a confessional. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a story that led down the path of the, to the worst thing that I've ever said to my father. And um, I have a friend named Toby. She is 62. And um, she frequently gets mammograms. And the last mammogram, or the one that leads to this story, they found something suspicious. So they called her back for a biopsy. And um, she's going to be pissed that I'm sharing this intimate detail. But honestly, she's not going to watch the video, so she's not going to know that I'm sharing it. And if she is, I can always block it. This is just my uh, interpretation of facts. And uh, she can definitely have an alternate, you know, perception or description of the set events. But uh, this is my interpretation. They found a lymph node that uh, looked suspicious. So they wanted to do a biopsy. They performed the biopsy. And there were some cancerous cells in the biopsy. So I believe, I don't know this for a fact, that they uh, decided the best course of action was a lumpectomy. And uh, they removed, I believe, that lymph node. And uh, there were no other signs. It wasn't bad. There were just some cancerous cells. And they said, oh, ooh, we got this just in the nick of time. So uh, we're going to utter the most dangerous phrase known to humanity. And that is, out of an abundance of caution, uh, we uh, recommend that uh, we radiate your very radiosensitive breast material. And... Uh, I don't know how enthusiastically she agreed to it, but I uh, told her, you know, in no, no few, few terms or conversations that I disagreed with this. And uh, she elected for um, radiation treatment following the lumpectomy. Anyway, um, the worst thing that I uh, said to my father, because he came down with prostate cancer, and I said, hey, Dad, you know, I've been doing a lot of research and there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that cannabis you know, can really help with that. And I, I said, based off of the research that I've done, we can come up with a, a prescribed dose and, you know, give it a shot. See, see what you got in about a year. Prostate cancer is slow moving and um, see, see what you think. And he did. And uh, I think a year later, he, he got a biopsy back. Now, he didn't follow the prescribed dose prescribed those that I suggested, but he did do some. And at that year anniversary, uh, he said that his cancer was in 70% remission. And uh, that was a very weird time for us. He uh, had come up with my brother in late February of 2015. He had brought Nancy. Um, I think Jim and Nancy stayed in the hotel. They were getting their stuff out of my farmhouse. And my brother Jeff stayed over at Bauman's house. Anyway, um, they came over to my house. Jeff was yelling and screaming, and he went to strike my dog, and I threw him out. And uh, Jim and Nancy followed. I don't want to say what my father did next with Lieutenant Roy Ryan of the Ridgefield Police. Lieutenant Roy Ryan of the Ridgefield Police. We uh, need to talk. Anyway, uh, my father told me what he said to Mr. Roy, uh, sorry, Lieutenant Roy Ryan of the Ridgefield Police, who, uh, misread, misinterpreted, and misrepresented. And I'm not sure how to use what I'm... Per, per, perpetrated in per, perpetuity. Uh, the misinformation and the mal... It's in there. I can't get it out of facts 
to include taking all the biased police reports of his corrupted nincompoop officers and taking them to a third party psychologist to have me evaluated. Now this third party psychologist employed by the state by I think Lieutenant Roy Ryan or it might have even been um, interim chief uh, Lucas. I don't remember his first name. He was the elected sheriff for Clark County, Washington. One of them took these Ridgefield police reports to a third party psychologist. And that third party psychologist never phoned me, never informed me, never, I don't think he did fucking anything but read those reports and wrote out a letter that, you know, I was highly dangerous to the community and, and police officers in particular and all sorts of shit. My attorney, Sean Bogart, said, hey, dude, they, they papered it so they can kill you. You know, he was legitimately fearing for my life. My attorney was. But, um, Lieutenant Roy Ryan and, uh, Interim Chief Lucas. Don't get me started on the, the current uh, sheriff of Clark County, John Chapman. At the time I was dealing with him, he was chief, I'm chief criminal deputy. I, hold on. Chief criminal deputy of Clark County Sheriff's Department in uh, Clark County, Washington. But uh, he allowed my house to be torn down. He and um, Commander Sample, if he still works for him, he was Sergeant Sample at the time. Uh, and uh, Sheriff Atkins, Chuck Atkins, I think. Well, shit, I've been in his jail enough. He auctioned off my fucking properties. I had a lot of communications with him. I met with him and... Uh, John Chapman in person, uh, Gunda was with me. I was not doing well by any means. And there was this fucking sow. I mean, there was this uh, lady that was there named Kathleen, Kathleen Ryan. I don't think I impressed her. But anyway, so yeah, it was a meeting between Kathleen Ryan, Chuck Atkins, John Chapman. And I, I think the most dignified uh, person or lady in the room was Gunda. And uh, she behaved admirably. But anyway, uh, I think Chuck did a couple terms and retired. And uh, at the time, his undersheriff was Tim Cook. Now, Tim Cook was responsible for the no-knock uh, dawn raid on my farmhouse located at, uh, wow, 1420. I think no 1620 Northwest 189th Street Ridgefield Washington 9864 anyway um why was I saying that I was homeless in the front yard of that destroyed house I was it was terrible it was terrible I have Tourette's I'm sleeping in a fucking tent in front of a house that those fucking yahoos Willingly, oh, I know what I was telling you about. Uh, Tim Cook was uh, head, I don't know what his rank was at the time, most likely lieutenant, but he was head of the Clark Skamania Drug Task Force. Now, that's a dual county drug task force. And Clark County has the craziest fucking equipment, tanks and all. Dude, you should see how they fucking roll. You want to talk about an army, an occupying fucking army. You should see what fucking Clark County has. I talked to John Chapman about it. He's like, you, my silence does not confirm or deny your statements, Mr. Hensley. I was like, whatever, dude. But uh, they uh, no-knocked me and blew my fucking door in, threw me. I don't want to get into what happened. Um, but anyway, he started screaming, where are your kids? Where are your kids? And I was like, you thought there were kids in here, motherfucker? And you came in like that? And, dude, it was crazy. I don't know if you've ever been in a no-knock raid, but uh, once once a judge signs the warrant, it doesn't matter. There is no more reasoning with these motherfuckers. They're coming at you no matter what. 
I tried negotiating with them prior to the raid, but they wouldn't fucking have it. And uh, they blew my fucking door in anyway. Treated me with, you know, they treated me with respect after the first encounter. After the takedown, they treated me with respect. But uh, they certainly didn't treat my stuff with respect. They tracked dog shit all over the house. They, uh, um, I had a roommate that had a Doberman there. And evidently, there was a pile of dog poop upstairs. I was unaware of this, but uh, they found out about it because when they stepped in it, then they just started trying to smear it off their fucking boots. There was... Uh, uh, chewing tobacco spit in most of my sinks throughout my house. This was a very luxurious house. And uh, I had probably six cases of Monster Energy drinks, various flavors, because I got it at Miletus when they were discontinuing distribution of Monster. But anyway, uh, they drank several of my energy drinks. They didn't secure the front door when they left. Um, it, the, it, the whole thing was handled rather poorly. And Scott Akata, I think he's still an acting prosecutor in Clark County. Uh, I, I don't think they do it anymore. I was in the cemetery um, off of Mill Plain, uh, an old pioneer cemetery. And there's a guy with his epitaph on the ground. And it says, uh, the only legally hanged man in Clark County, Washington. Anyway, it was interesting. But anyway. I don't think they, they flog people anymore, but uh, if, if they don't just severely reprimand some, I mean, Scott Akata, like a, a tongue lashing. I mean, he needs a tongue lash, a tongue flogging. Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, what an asshole. After they failed to get, get a conviction on me, he didn't apologize. You know what he said to me? He looked me in the fucking eyes and he said to me, we'll get you next time. Is this next time, motherfucker? Come and get me, because you haven't fucking got me. Yeah, oh, you got me. I'm, I, I don't know how the appeals process works, but uh, I might be a convicted felon right now. But I think because it's freshly appealed, it hasn't, you know, marred my record yet, but I haven't pulled a background. All I know is when they released me, there was no conditions upon my release. There was no supervision. Uh, it was just, hey, you just get the fuck out. You've been here for 18 months. Had you pled guilty immediately, your immediate sentencing range was from zero days to 90 days. Um, the realistic sentencing range with somebody that doesn't have a felony record and no violent crime history would have been zero days. But uh, because I did 18 months waiting for trial, uh, he um, sentenced me to the maximum of 90 days and then released me with no DOC requirements, which stands for Department of Corrections. In other words, I didn't have to see a probation officer. And um, I had no mental health requirements, meaning I did not need to go uh, to anger management or any form of supervised um, counseling therapy or uh, classes. None of that. I was ordered to none of that. Um, they knew that I uh, was disabled. Uh, Judge Collier uh, recognized in court that he has known that I was disabled since 2015. He testified to that under oath, not to the part of it being 2015, but uh, I think you know if you asked him that question under oath now, he would testify yes. I think he misrepresented me in court saying that he saw me with my fist balled in the no sir. He saw me in his courtroom in full BDUs. And what that means is battle dress uniform. I'm an old soldier. That's 1993 talk, right? Um, my fists were not bald, and I did have control of my service animal, whether I held that leash in my hand or not. I want to say for you to testify against me in open court and testify that you know that I'm a disabled man and that you know that I'm nonviolent, and the things that you said, I don't know if you believe in hell. I don't know if you believe in that, but I gotta say, you were a trusted Washington State Supreme Superior, whatever the fuck the high thing is for these state yahoos. Um, not the top court, but Superior, Superior Court. You were a Washington State Superior Court judge with I don't know how many decades of experience or whatever it was. And for you to say the things that you said 
under oath in a court of law against me. I don't know if you believe in the fires of hell. I'm very spiritual. I'll pray for you.